welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Allison, and today we are going to be creating three projects with the 3D embossing folder of the month from Spellbinders. This is the May 2023 3D embossing folder. It's called Balloons and Banners, and as you can see, it's aptly named because it is full of balloons and banners. Now, I've done a lot of techniques with 3D embossing folders. Um, here you see what it looks like embossed. This is a panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock. Um, like I was saying, I've done a lot of different techniques. Today, I'm going to be coloring. Here's the card we're going to make today. And I'm going to be using my Zig Clean Watercolor Brush Markers. And... I just have a watercolor brush on the side, my spray bottle. When I use my zigs, I just, I don't have like a bottle or a cup of water to the side. I just spray water on my glass mat because I don't use a lot of water, um, but you'll see uh, how I am gonna use the water. So I'm gonna speed through most of the coloring, but at the beginning, we'll, we'll take it slow. I'm gonna put the color down with the marker where you would have shadows. Now I am not a colorist. I, I don't do shadow studies. Um, I just kind of guess where the shadows would be. And obviously this balloon is behind the banners. So the shadows are going to be, you know, right where those banners are. But as you can see, I wet my, my brush, and I bring the water to the paper and then I kind of pull the mark, the color up to the rest of the balloon. This water brush that I'm using does not have water in it. I just use it like a regular paintbrush. Um, I actually have nicer paintbrushes, but I reach for this a lot, mainly because it's right in front of me on my, on my desk. So, I'm putting, you know, more color onto the balloon and spreading it around with the water again. Now you might be asking, why am I using Bristol Smooth instead of watercolor paper? Because these are watercolor markers. Um, I just find that I like the Bristol better. I, I, it doesn't pill, which a lot of cardstocks will pill when you use too much water. Um, and I just, I just really love it. I use it all the time when I use my zigs. So here we're just, this is actually a deeper color of yellow that I was trying. And, um, again, you can see I put the heavier color towards the bottom and then I spread it around with a little bit of water. I don't come in with a lot of water. That's why I have a paper towel over to the side so I can kind of... You know, if I get too much water, I can just dab it on the paper towel. Now, the great thing about Zigs and really any watercolor brush um, marker is if you go outside the lines, it's really easy to clean it up. And I think probably with one of the yellow balloons, I did that. You just come in with a clean brush dab some water on the spot and then kind of soak it up with the paper towel and it should clean it up pretty easily. So here you can see I'm doing that right now. I got a little bit of pink outside the balloon. So I'm just coming in with clean water and soaking it up with the paper towel. Now this pink color that I had chosen was not, <laughs> I wouldn't pick this color again. It's you can see it's, I'm having a little bit of trouble pulling the color to the rest of the balloon. It's just a very saturated color and um, probably a little brighter than I had anticipated. I do have swatches of all of these colors that I, that I look at before I pick which markers I'm going to use. Um, and I do like the color of this pink marker when it's, you know, spread out with water or diluted with water. Um, but again, it is a little brighter than I had originally planned for this card. 
So I would say of all of the colors that I used today, the, the pink was the hardest. Um, the blue, which will be coming up after the orange, the blue was the easiest to work with, I feel. I think anytime you work with colors that have red in it, they're just so much more saturated. Um, and if you think about when you're stamping with red ink, it's always the red inks that stay in your stamps. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what it is about the red color, but. So here I am just, you know, filling in all the balloons and my plan was to do all the balloons first. So we're gonna speed through, I think, the rest of the orange balloons. When I um, thought about starting a YouTube channel, one thing I never thought that I would do is sit here and color for you. <laughs> um, coloring is not necessarily my jam, although I do I do love my zigs, but it's weird for me to even sit here watching me color it's it's kind of like watching paint dry and it, well it actually is watching paint dry but um i would play some music for you instead of blabbering on but um i'm an 80s music girl so i'm not really allowed to play the music that i would want to play on my <laughs> youtube videos but you know if you want to turn on some 80s music while you watch me color, um, that would be fitting. So, okay, so here I am coloring the banners and I just basically would make a stripe along the top with the marker and then I would use the water brush to pull the color down to the rest of the pennant. And that's what I did for, for all the pennants. So those were pretty easy. The reason I wanted to color this 3D embossing folder, and again, this is the first time that I have colored a 3D embossed image. Uh, it's just so fun. I mean, look at this. This just like was screaming to be colored. So that's why I did it, and now that I've done it, I, I really think I'm gonna try it on future folders. Um, I do think some folders lend themselves better to being colored. Um, and so, yeah, this one just really was calling for it. So the, the theme of all of the clubs this month, they're so festive, um, birthdays, celebrations, so throughout my projects this month, I'm using this It's Party Time stamp set. This is one of my favorite stamp sets from Spellbinders. Um, I was looking on their site yesterday. I see it in a bundle still. I don't see it as a separate product. So that makes me kind of sad, but I have linked it below to um, a reseller. So it's still being sold and again it's it's part of a big bundle this stamp set came out i think last summer maybe may june-ish last year for the big birthday celebration for spellbinders all right here's my finished card and all i did was add a few sequins and that was done so while i had my zigs out i decided to make a matching tag and the great thing about watercolor markers is you can just create your own background. So all you do is just scribble the color on the paper. And again, this is Bristol. This is not watercolor paper. And I just took a big flat brush and just spread the water down. And look at that. Look at that nice blend. So I'm just going to cut a tag out of that paper. And again, I'm going to use a sentiment from this stamp set. Um, but like I was saying, the collection last summer, their big birthday celebration, there's a lot of products from that um, collection that would go so well with 
this month's clubs. And I, I do use another one of those later on in this video. It's pretty hilarious. So here I'm, I'm going to put the tag through the embossing folder and I'm just lining it up so that I can still stamp that sentiment. And there is a nice flat area in the folder that allows you to put sentiments. So now I'm going to try something that I have not really tried on paper before. I'm going to try sanding the embossed edges. Now I've done this on metallic paper. I've done it on Yupo paper, like a, an alcohol inked background. In fact, I think I did that on my very first YouTube video, which was the March Spellbinders Clubs. So this is regular paper and I really wasn't sure it was going to work. Um, and then it was at this point that I was like, I am sanding my brand new white glass mat. So I grabbed a piece of scrap paper. But this folder, it's a 3D folder. And that means there are high edges. And there are high points, there are low points, and then there's midpoints. And those balloons are kind of the midpoints. So I found that I had to use the corner of my little sanding block to sand those down. Um, it did work, but the, the pennants or the banners, those are the really high points. So it, it really sanded a lot easier on those elements, but I was able to kind of get in there. I think, um, like a piece of sandpaper would have worked easier. You can also, uh, use white pigment ink and just kind of, um, swipe your pad across the embossed edges and I do that on my last card that you'll see. So here I kind of sanded off a little too much of that balloon so I'm just adding a little bit more color to to bring it back. So after this I felt like you could see the um, and here I'm stamping the sentiment. I felt like you could see the balloons and the banners but I wanted to enhance them a little bit more. So I came in with some glossy accents and this is a tool that I always forget about. And whenever I remember, I, I'm always like, why don't I use this more? It's such a underestimated <laughs> tool and it's actually great for word dyes or alphabet dyes. It just adds that you know, final touch to your project. So this was really easy to apply to the balloons. I didn't do the banners. I just wanted the balloons since balloons are usually shiny. And here I'm tapping my bottle on my desktop to make sure that it's not stuck next time I go to use it. And here you can see the shine and the dimension that, that those glossy accents give. And I finished it with the same sequins that I had put on my card. And I think those look really cute together. All right, so <laughs> I debated on whether to include this card. This was, this kind of went sideways, but my idea was Again, use a product from last year's birthday celebration collection. And this, you might recognize this party animal die or party balloon animal. I, I have it linked below. I can't remember the exact name, but I wanted to use him with the 3D embossed image as a background. And the colors I chose, again, they're brighter than I had anticipated them being. But I grabbed this banner from the small die of the month for this month. And, and by the way, I will have a video tomorrow with featuring the small die of the month. But so this banner um, really gets hung below an airplane in the small die kit. So I played around in trying to figure out how this dog, this balloon dog, would hold the banner. And I finally found this string that is part of a Christmas die set. It is the 
more Christmas decorations or, or something like that. And again, I have it linked below. I can't remember the exact name, but this string is for Christmas lights. And so I, I didn't really mean to make it look like this poor dog is being strangled by Christmas lights, <laughs> Christmas light string. But I don't know. At the time, I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, and then I tied the string to his nose because the nose is where the knot is on the balloon animal. So anyway, I do weird things sometimes. I, you know, I think I've mentioned this before. I try to do things different. And if there's any lesson to be learned from this card, it's that you should pull out your supplies and use them with your monthly kits. Um, you know, if, if your monthly kit does nothing else other than inspire you to use your other products, then I think it's money well spent. So here are the re all the cards that I made today. Um, I think they're really cute. I'm really happy with how they turned out other than perhaps the dog. But um, I hope you'll join me tomorrow because I, again, I'll have another video featuring the small die of the month. And I love, love, love the small die this month. Um, I really appreciate you joining me today. And if you liked this video, please click the like. And I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.